today we will be starting a new chapter for new new lesson new section because up to now we talked about the theory of ultimacy <coughs> if i give a brief uh, explanation about what we have discussed so far we mentioned about the ultimate natures according to the theravada tradition and about the corporate reality rupa then uh, about the mentalities chitta chetasika together uh, briefly about chitta and some chetasikas we took lots of lessons lectures i would like to try and describe uh, separate chetasikas <coughs> though we couldn't finish all <coughs> uh, then we discussed about some special attributes of mentalities collectively and also aramana is the object so now we come into a new chapter section called causality <coughs> in buddhism theravada buddhism specifically we have uh, about the theory of realities what exists and how this existence happens that is called causality so knowing what is there and knowing how it happens how it occurs how it continues is two things then there is a very special uh, related to the causality but which is completely opposite of causality which is called pahana pahana is eradication eradication is also another fundamental which cannot be explained uh, it is related to it is related to causality to some extent but when we say when the wisdom arises ignorance is dispelled when wholesome deeds arise <clears throat> unwholesome deeds get dispelled it is not related to causality it is another different sort of a fundamental expelling dispelling pahana <clears throat> but uh, in terms of causality when we talk about talk as when the cause is there result is found we say when the result is cause is removed result will be removed that is one aspect of causality but how the cause is removed it doesn't explain according to causality that's why i said pahana eradication is a separate chapter it's a separate thing means when we say <coughs> because of a b exist we can say when we remove a b is not happening so it's another side of causality it can be understood through causality but how a is removed we cannot explain it through causality it's a different aspect so ultimacy causality and eradication is a different thing for that we have a fundamental like when the wisdom is happening ignorance will be eradicated how it happens that is a practically something we experience is not we can give some similes like when the light happens darkness is dispelled when the heat cool comes heat is dispel, removed so we can give some similes but there is no way of explaining it but practically we can understand it or experience it so there's a, it's another chapter then we also have another thing called condition unconditioned state unconditioned state is also something which cannot be explained in terms of logic it is also in as one aspect we accept it based on the faith towards the buddha but we can uh, bring logical arguments for its existence so it's another chapter in unconditioned state so commentary say you don't try to find out logic behind an unconditioned state it is something that we accept expect accept based on some assumptions so it's a, it's, a, it's another 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 chapter development is also another topic development in the end we come into the enlightenment it is also related to causality causality i have another aspect of causality is certain attributes get intensified when we repeat it with the repetition the in quality get increased when we keep on developing wisdom when we keep on practicing effort 
our level of effort will increase. That is also a sort of causality, but it is also another something extra is there. How things get developed? Why, why when we keep on practicing one sort of an action, why we get the proficiency? How it happens? This is also not explainable, but we see it or experience it through our experience. So these are the aspects like Buddhism explains about ultimacy, Buddhism explains about the causality, Buddhism explains about the eradication, unconditioned state, and also about the development or cultivation of wholesome qualities. Some are very unique. For example, wholesome qualities cannot be dispelled. Unwholesome qualities do not fit to be development. Unwholesome qualities get intensified when you keep on uh, improving them, but they don't come into very conspicuous uh, uh, growth like wholesome deeds. Wholesome deeds from the Kamavachara level, you go into Arupavachara, from Arupavachara to Lokutra. So this kind of uh, st steps are found. But in unwholesome side, there is a certain kind of a increasing quality of the, its nature, uh, strength, but it doesn't go into such development. So likewise, there are some few aspects, uh, main pillars of Buddhist teachings. So we have now come to the topic called causality. Causality means also we can call conditionality. When we talk about causality, we are not talking only about the cause. Cause, why something becomes a cause? Because it becomes, it produces a result. So when you talk about causality, we have to talk about both cause and the effect. The word, the word for cause is pacha. The effect is called pacha yupana. When the cause is there, pacha happens. How a cause is related to pacha yupana? It is in three ways. For the arising of the pacha yupana. Cause is the effect. I'll be using the Pali terms frequently, but also the English terms. So, Pachya, how Pachya is related to Pachya Yupanna? Pachya Yupanna, not Pachupanna. Pachupanna is also something we can call for cause, but it also refers to the time. Therefore, here we have Ya, Pachya Yupanna. Pachya Yupanna, something which happens or exists because of Pachya. So, how a Pachya is related to Pachya Yupanna? In three ways. Either for its arising, either for its arising, for its sustaining in generations. Third one, for its growth, growth in generations. I repeat again, cause supports the Pachi Upanna, or Pachya supports the Pachi Upanna, cause supports the effect in three ways. For the arising of the effect, for the sustaining in generations of the effect, and also for the growth within the generations. Normally, in Pali, we find for the arising and for the sustaining, but growth, in teachers have explained about the growth, but you can find it in the literature. Because Buddha mentioned in the Mahanidana Sutta, without the Vijnana, Nama Rupa would never come into such a growth. So growth is also something mentioned in suttas. For the arising, for the sustaining of generations, and for the growth of, re, uh, of effects. Next thing is a fundamental of the uh, uh, causality in Buddhism, in Theravada Buddhism specifically, which I'll be explaining in the next lectures. I am not giving the fundamental uh, attributes or peculiar points of causality. I'm talking about, I'm only be talking about a certain aspect which will be a little bit complicated, but anyway, such broad apprehension is necessary in order to understand the varieties of causality in Theravada, within the Theravada tradition. So, another very important fundamental is Pachaya and Pachayupanna are different always. Pachaya and Pachayupanna cannot be the same. Pachaya and Pachayupanna cannot be the same. A reality cannot support itself. Reality cannot support itself. Support for the growth, support for the arising, support for the sustaining. So it's an attribute of self. If something supports its own existence, we call it has the ability of self. Self-sustaining. 
self arising based on itself. So these qualities are the attributes of a self according to Buddhism which is an imaginary object, which is not something found in the reality. So therefore, cause and effect can never be the same according to Buddhist teachings. Then we, when we come to the cause, cause can be an ultimate reality. When you talk about the ultimate realities, if you remember, remind the first lectures given in the previous semester, maybe most, some of them forgotten. Uh, ultimate realities are Chitta, Chetasika, 18 Rupas, not 28, because 10 Rupas are not Paramattas. So in terms of Chittas, Jivan Chitta or 89 Chittas, 52 Chetasikas, and 18 Rupa and Nibbana. These are the Nibbana or the unconditioned states. These are the Paramattas. Sometimes we have Paramatta Jatika and Anupana Dhamma, but they are also related to Paramatta. Related means they are also a one aspect of Paramatta, so I don't distinguish them here. Then, something which is related to Paramatta is the ten Anupana Rupas. <coughs> then we have Panyati. <coughs> so whatever it is, something which is something which is a reality, something which is uh, something related to reality like Anipanna Rupas or uh, a concept, all can be a cause. Con unconditioned state, all can be a cause. Whatever which is found ultimately or conceptually, all can be a cause. When it comes to Pachyupanna, it's always, always Pachyupanna is the uh, ultimate reality. That is, a diff that is a point that we have to understand. Concepts are synthetical creations of the mind. So therefore, they are not found in the existence. That is something which is constructed by the mind. If something doesn't exist, it doesn't need the support of causes. Ca causes are not relevant to something which does not exist. So therefore, Concepts can never be Pachyupana. Then we come to the unconditioned states, which is called Nibbana. They have no beginning, no end. So when there is no beginning, and it doesn't depend on others, so it is also out of the list of Pachyupana. Nibbana, unconditioned states, does not need the support of Pachyas. So Nibbana is out of the Pachyas, Pachyupanna, sorry, pach, excuse me, Pachyupanna. Panyati is out of Pachyupanna. Then Anipanna Rupas are also out of Pachyupanna because they are not ultimate realities. So what we found in the Pachyupanna group is the 89 Chittas, 252 Chetisikas, 18 Nipanna concretely produced Rupa, and uh, 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 that's all. Right? These are the things that we find. In the Pachi Upana group. But when it comes to Pachayas, you find Chitta, Chetasika, Rupa, Nibbana, Panyati, all. <coughs> all. When it related to, if you remember the ultimate call, explanation, we call, talk about the universal characteristics also. These universal characteristics are not ultimate realities, but they are something related to ultimate realities. They also have been explained as Pachya and Pachi Upana, is what I am not going to talk, I, I, I will include it here. Uh, one thing is I, I miss them, but at the same time, uh, if we bring them here, it makes a, it makes can make it a bit complicated. I will be if time allows, I will discuss about them at the end of the course already, if time allows. So anyway, so this is the basic theory of Pachya and Pachyupanna. Three things we discuss. Pachya supports the Pachyupanna in three ways, either for its arising, for its sustaining in generations, or for its growth. Then Pachya can be whatever nature, ultimate or related to ultimate or conceptual. Then Pachyupanna, but Pachyupanna is always an ultimate reality. Is always an ultimate reality. So these are the few points that we want to discuss. Pachya, there are a few synonyms for Pachya. If you go to the 9.1 paragraph, Within bold, in bold letters, Pachya, Karana, Hetu, Aramana, Ahara, Nidana, Samudaya, Pabhava, Sambhava. In other words, Sambhava, all are synonyms for Pachya. 
It's given in the footnote, Sambhava. Then when you come to the 9.2, <coughs> Pachyupanna, the synonyms of Pachyupanna. Pachyupanna, Sapachaya, Sankata, Patichasamupanna, these are the, there can be more, many more, but these are very commonly found. Patichasamupanna is a Pachya. Patichasamupada, some interpret this, Patichasamupada is the cause. That is how it is explained in the commentary literature. But Patichasamupada is also explained, explained as the phenomenon or the process of the causality. So I prefer the second explanation, which was also propounded by Venerable Lady Sadhu and by ancient teachers. So when it comes to Padish Sampada, I'll be explaining it as a phenomenon, not as the cause. There are two interpretations on this. The literature mostly prefers the explanation, the Padish Sampada as the cause. Otherwise, who has studied the commentaries of Vishuddha Magga may have a question, why did I include Parichya Samuppanna into the Parichya Upanna, but not the Parichya Samuppada into the Pachya? So that is the commentarial, the Venerable Buddha Gosa strongly recommends that Parichya Samuppada should be Pachya. But when you look into the suttas and also when you look into this, this ideology, when the Buddha has, they, he brings, the tradition brings a certain way of explaining it grammatically and so forth. But when you look into it, you find it's a phenomenon that the Buddha has explained. So therefore, even though it is strongly refuted in the commentary literature, I prefer the explanation on as a phenomenon. Patija Samuppada as a phenomenon. Patija Samuppanna directly Sutta states, Patija Samuppanna is the uh, effect. That is, Buddha has directly mentions. It means jara maranam patita samuppanna. For example, vinyanam patita samuppanna. It's direct. It doesn't mention avijja is patita samuppada. What is patita samuppada? Always, most of the places is mentioned is avijja pachya sankhara is the patita samuppada. It's a process. It's something which happens. We'll come to that lesson when we discuss about patita samuppada in brief. So these are the main points that patita, uh, cause and effect. Cause supports the effect in three ways and cause can be ultimate reality related to ultimate reality or concept Pachyu Panna is always an ultimate reality and but it all it excludes the asankata unconditioned reality now the famous phrase i'll come to that famous phrase you will find in many suttas related to some suttas related to Pati Samupada. if you remember the udana pali <clears throat> in our pali class also we discussed Buddha contemplated. Imasming sati idam hoti. Imas upada idam upachati. This is the, I would call, the basic foundation of causality found in Buddhism. Imasming sati idam hoti. Imas upada. <coughs> The next one is Imasmi Asati. Idam Nahoti. Imas Niroda. Idam Nirujati. So I'll be focusing today only on these words. Seems like a very simple formula, <clears throat> but when you put it into the fundamentals of the tradition, the teachers have interpreted this in various ways, and some interpretations can be proven within the canon itself. So it shows that even though it seems like a very simple statement, this is, uh, there is a huge philosophy embodied in this statement. For that, we have to find out the meanings of sati, upada, asati, niroda. But when you go to the stems, okay, if you translate this sentence now, when it is there, you must think sati is a locative case. When it is there, idam hoti, something the effect is found. This is the cause. Effect is found. You must say upada. Because of its upada, we know it translated as arising. This arises. Effect arises because of cause. 
you must be nasati when that force is not found idan na hoti the effect is not found you must have you know because of the passing away of the force idan nirujjati it passes away this is the normal normal formula we understand so we first go to the steps if you grammatically explain this seems the locative this is ablative ablative is very clearly seen in cause and effect for example when uh, you want to say it happened because of this we normally use the ablative case cause and effect is used with the three cases ablative instrumental and accusative normally locative case here it seems like the absolute you know my class it as absolute but here the commentary says this is the causal locative of cause even though it represents the absolute when it happens but it also shows the causal effect in a uh, in the maha chakravarti sutta buddha mentions about uh, it's the idea goes like when the money is not given money is not distributed among the society the poverty increased right so when the money is not given it's not only the time it is the reason when the money is given the dane if i remember my memory uh, when it is not given the locative case was used even though it has the absolute meaning it also has the causal meaning so therefore this is not a pure absolute when we absolute when we say why the buddha was going he stood up or why the buddha was going the uh, it's it rain so this is just purely absolute of time time related when this happened when he came in i was start teaching so this is called absolute in pali i uh, i have absolute this is called bhava lakana then but in this case it's not the time only it's cause is there when the money is not given poverty increase it have time relationship is also there at the same time causal relation is also there because the money is not given poverty increase so therefore grammatically this both represent the causal relationship then the stems of this sati here is santa upada is stem is upada upada is long here upada this one is niroda this is asanta right asanta so these are the stems <clears throat> that we are supposed to analyze so what is this upada what is this santa what is this asanta what is this nirodha so when you go into the uh, literature of upada if you look in the page number 1 The term upada refers to the following meanings. In the beginning, ball letters. Udaya vatta upada. You go to the next page. That is two fold as kani upada, santa upada. Then anirodha upada. <coughs> It is three fold as dharma upada. These terms are I have given based on the commentarial information. You cannot find these terms, but the meaning can be found. I have given the references. Anirudha upada is also again two fold as upajana raha upada, pala raha upada. then we have another one page number 3 anupanna upada so they all are related as upada so when you find the word upada in the text commentaries sub commentaries any of it can refer to any of them so that is very important sometimes the word when we say upada we may think only as arising but when you refer to the patita samupada when you think deeply just arising cannot fix all the explanations found in parisampa that's why this uh, analysis is very important so how do you understand this upad this is this can be a bit complicated lesson sometimes you may think it is necessary to have this kind of understanding but at the end of if you grab the idea clearly you will see how clear it becomes when you have this kind of uh, broad apprehension on these terminologies so if i explain about uh, <coughs> nature sansara is the continuation of nama and rupa i normally draw it like this this is how i do i think of the medium of this 
doesn't mean it's a wave, right? Nama rupa align and pass away, align and pass away, right? You can have different diagrams on this, but this is how I used to do it. So now, if I take this is a life, continues, right? It's a comma giving a new life. Okay, I have this is a life. This is a death of one life, and this is another life. This keeps on happening. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll come to you. I'll talk about one life only. So, <clears throat> now, we are here, for example. We are at this moment. Now, Rupa is supposed to happen in our death because our karma is still existing. Right? That's why we cannot even force, even we cannot force to stop our chitta by force, right? <laughs> it will happen. Then, as long as our defilements are not uprooted, what happens? Nam Rupa will continue to arise and we are bound to that, we are not free from that. You may doubt that it has not happened yet, but, yes, but still, it, has, it, it, it will happen for sure. That is why Buddha says, we are not free from suffering. So, <clears throat> now this is the Nam Rupa process. This is a one life. Now when we say Uddeya Vartha Upada, Upada means, the very basic idea of Upada is coming into existence out of non-existence. When a reality occurs, it was not there before and it suddenly occurs. This occurrence, coming into existence, is called Upada. coming into existence of a Nama Rupa which didn't happen before. So we call it Uddeya Avatta Upada. This is called the arising of Nama Rupa. Arising of a Nama Rupa. <coughs> So in the Manupada Sutta, Buddha clearly mentions when he was explaining about the Sariputta's meditation. Imekira Dhamma Ahutva Sambhunti Hutva Pativenti. These realities, Venerable Sariputta contemplated in his Vipassana that these realities happen having not existed before. Ahutva Sambhunti Hutva Pativenti. They pass away having existed completely. So this is a fundamental that we find within the canon itself. Then this upada is not ultimate reality. It is a state of the ultimate reality. One state, stage, a rising stage. A rising is different from the reality. Sound is different from the arising of the sound. It's a happening. It is something that can be experienced within the sound. Then this is again to fall momentary arising and arising of a generation. For example, if you take the life as one generation, we can call this is the beginning of the generation and every mind moment which occurs within a generation is momentary. Hanikupada and Santatupada. I'm not going to take much time on this because it's easy to understand. Then we come into another type of uh, upada, Anirodha Upada. So this is how the commentators bring the logic. They say, you must think sati. Idam hoti. You must say upada. Idam upajati. This is the basic fundamentals for this explanation. They say, this one statement and the second statement are equal. There's nothing special mentioned here. When we say sati and upada, they both refer to the same thing. So what has been explained in the first statement is re-explained by the second statement. So, upada and santa <coughs> are identical. 
Upada and Santa are identical. So what is the Upada? What they call it? Upada is equal to Anirodha. If Upada is equal to Santa, Santa is existing, us to ex being. Santa is existing, reality which exists. Antman, Sant, ing form. It's not the abstract noun. Gachant, Gamana is going. Gachant is the one who goes. Sant is the one which exists. One who or one which exists. Sant. So Sant is equal to Upada. This is the commentator's explanation. Sant, these two statements uh, first, second statement emphasizes or re explains the first statement in a different angle because these two statements are very basic fundamentals. They are not different. What, have, what is stated again by the second statement? What, what is mentioned first? So, Santa is equal to Upada. Then, Santa is existing. Existing means not vanished. Niroda is vanished. So, Therefore, sometimes equal to anirodha, opposite of nirodha. So then, upada is also anirodha. So there are three things that can be called as anirodha. Anirodha means not vanished, not disappeared, something which exists. If you remember the first lecture I mentioned, there are four types of existence. Ultimate, ultimacy, in the ultimacy. Sankata existence, Paramatta Dhammas, Upadino Dhammas, the results which are going to happen by a Kama which got the opportunity, Paramatta Jatikas, the natures which exist associated in the mind stream, and also Anupanna Dhamma, natures which are going to happen if the conditions prevail. So now, Sankha equals Upada equals Anurva. So, Upada means here, upada means something which exists. It's not just the arising. Sometimes upada refers to the arising, but sometimes it refers to something which exists. So there are three things which exist. What are the three things? A reality which has come to the states of upada, titi, and banga, which is also something which exists. That is called dharma and upada. For Dharma and Father. Then, a reality which has the possibility to arise, which has the potential to arise, that is also another Upada. For example, the latent defilements. Latent defilements like avijja, tanha, for example, they have the possibility to arise when conditions support. So we call they are not eradicated. So the unwholesome natures which are not eradicated, if you look into the Mahamanukya Sutta, Buddha emphasize about this existence of this latent force. He rebuked Venerable Manukya Putta. Many mentions the idea that because of the Sanyojana, beings are bound to the samsara. He was referring, when you read the Sutta, you get confused why the Buddha is rebuking this person. In the first glance, it seems like why he is rebuking him. He just rebukes him so badly. So, with the question, why is Because he says the bound, beings are bound to samsara because of Sanyojana. So, it's the Buddha's teachings. He's, he asked the Manukya Putta, where have I taught like? To whom I have taught like this? It's become very confusing. But in the end, he mentions it is not the sanyojana which arises. We are bound with it is the sanyojana which is not eradicated, which is latent, which is underlying, which is remaining in a sleep, or which is which is in the potential level, the latent level. That is called anusaya, anuseti. <coughs> So this Sanyojana has the possibility to arise. So this is also called a certain Upada. This Upada is termed as Upajjana Maha. Upada. Upa 
ัจจามาเข้าก่อนเด้ง another point we'll be discussing this when we come to the commonalism yes ปัญญาราหุปาเลกปัญญาราหุปาเลกคำไหนกันแล้วปัญญาราหุปาเลกคำไหนกันแล้วปัญญาราหุปาเลกคำไหนกันแล้วปัญญาราหุปาเลกค
Phala Arha Upadha. Both are considered as Aniruddha Upadha, but I went to the exact uh, explanation because otherwise it may, it may confuse the lecture. So these are the points that we find as Upadha. Then there is another kind of Upadha, Upadha from which the realities from which we are not freed from. That are the suffering which is going to happen in future as long as, in future as long as we possess the defilements within us. So these are called Anupanna Upadha. They have not yet arisen, but we call them as Upadha. Why? Because we are not free from them. Anupanna Upadha. So these are the points, these are the Upadhas that we, I want to explain. According to the Buddhist context, Theravadians, Recognize how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five types of upadas. The nature of arising is a one upada. These two fall as santati and kanika. Santati upada and kanika upada. Then the reality which comes into the existing for nature, right, is also, its, its nature of coming into that state is also called upada. That state coming into the state of, uh, how to say, coming into the state of existence. Then, the latent defilements which are capable of arising when the conditions support, which remain within us, that is why when an object is unwisely given attention at, the defilements come up. So therefore, that latent quality is also called upada, upajana raha upada. The Upada word refers to the possibility of arising. Then the Kamma, which is past already, which we have done in the past, still follows us according to the Buddhist philosophy. So this Kamma is possible to give results as long as defilements are remaining. Defilements are the food of Kamma. Defilements are the food of Kamma. So as long as the defilements remain, Defilements are remain, sankharas would be in the state of able to produce results. We have done the kammas in the past. When you remove the defilements, what happens? The kammas which are still present within us become incapable of giving results. So this kamma which is still with the possibility, potential of giving result is called pala rahaupada. So we normally say, the commentary says, this karma still has the food to give reason, still has the support to give reason. What is the support? It is afforded by, afforded by uh, Kilesas. So this is also another upada, this is also another upada. This will be really, when you talk about the Patitasama upada, when we talk about all the possibilities, if you don't come into this kind of analysis, it's not possible to explain. Then. The suffering which is going to happen in future, future means which is going to happen, which is going to arise due to when the causes prevail, is also is considered as a upada which has not arisen yet. Which has not arisen yet. Right? So these are the points that I would like to discuss in the uh, in this lecture. So uh, if we uh, look into the page number three, then we come to the Call, states called Niroda. Then we come to the state called Niroda, right? When you come to the state called Niroda. So this Niroda means, now if I briefly explain before going to the next lecture, briefly explain, one Niroda is the passing away of the reality. That is what we know normally, passing away of the reality. Another type of a Niroda is Anupanna Niroda. The realities which were going to happen Right? There are five types of Anupana Niroda. I'll focus on your one because otherwise it's getting complicated. So Anupana Niroda means when the defilements are removed, these Anupana Upada will be removed, erased, without arising. That is called Anupana Niroda. That is the Nibbana. Then there's another type of Niroda. It is when the wisdom arises within us, these latent tendencies will be removed. Right? So that is another type of a neural. When the makachitta arises, respective kilesas are no more within us. 
So the absence of these kilesas is another niroda. Right? Then when these defilements, this is a very important point, if you give me attention, then these defilements are removed, what happened to this kamma? This kamma becomes incapable of giving a result. Kamma will not never be destroyed. You cannot destroy the kamma. Wisdom is not opposing the kamma. Wisdom opposes the ignorance. It opposes the defilements. Actually, it opposes the ignorance, so the defilements are also removed. Kamma will never be removed. What happens? The kamma which is possible to give results because of its food was there. When the food is removed, this kamma comes into the state of unproductive state. It means like a seed is fully dried or seed of the uh, uh, planting ability of the seed is completely destroyed. Even the seed still exists, it will not produce results. So likewise, this niroda, when we talk about the niroda, it also is few fold. I'll explain them in the next lecture. I took it as an introduction before I conclude the lecture. I'll go to your question, come to your questions. So there are a few types of nirodas. Nirodas which arising. Now if I talk about conclude the lecture, there are few five types of upada we discussed. Arising of a reality which didn't exist before. Then also the state of coming into the existing state of a reality which is also upada. Then we come into the uh, 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 also call the possible, the, the, uh, the latent defilements which are possible to arise are also called upada. The kamma, which is in the state of kamma samangita and which is capable of producing results, is also called upada. Then the suffering which is going to happen if the causes, re causes remain are also called upada before they are arising. Now when we come to Niroda, which I didn't explain in detail, the passing away of the reality from existence to non-existence, coming into that disappearance is a Niroda. Then when the causes are removed, the realities which would have happened will, be, will cease without arising. That is an Anupanna Niroda. Then when the wisdom arises, this will be eradicated, Pahana. So it's no more there. Latent defilements are no more. This is also called Niroda. This is what is called Ragakkaya, Dosakkaya, Mohakkaya. Buddha mentions in Itibuttaka Pali, Yo Tas Ragakkayo. That is the Ragakkaya. It is the commentary explains, Kinakar, the absence of Raga. is called Ragakkaya. Then we also know about Kamakkaya. In Ratana Sutta, Buddha mentioned Kinang Puranang Kamma. The past Kamma is eradicated. What does it mean my past kamma is eradicated? Because even you become arahant, still the kamma remains. Mukalana got the effects of kamma. Buddha got the effects of kamma. Kamma still remains within you. Kamma can never be eradicated. So what happened? What is the meaning of being eradicating? The kamma is eradicating. The kamma which gave the rebirth and the past kamma still have the potential to give results in this life. But the kamma to give a rebirth, to continue another life, it needs the support. It needs the support of the defilements. When the support of the defilements are removed, kamma still exists within you, but it is unproductive. When the kamma comes to the unproductive state, this is called the kamakkaya. That is called kinam purana. So even the kamma, it's not like defilements. Defilements are no more. You cannot find them anymore. Kamma will be found as long as the mind stream remains. But it comes to the state of unproductive state. It is called the Niroda of Kamma. So likewise, Niroda also is related to that. Then after we finish the discussion about this, if we apply this theory briefly about into Patita Samuppada, we will find how, how related they are. Yes, you can have the questions. Yes, sir. What is the difference between 9.3.1 9 and the uh, 9.3.1? Point two point one. Yeah. The difference. Two point one. Udanya Upada and Dharma Upada. Udayavata Upada is the. Udayavata Upada is just the arising. Dharma Upada means the reality which come into any of these states. That is Pachupana, the state of being present. That is different. 
Uh, it is also called upada. Even Anirudh upada and Anupana upada. Anirudh upada is. You can call, how to say, Anuruddhupada, anu, anu, this all, in one sense, can be called Anuruddhupada. For your easiness, I have made this sum, how to say, uh, to understand it easily. I have only limited the meaning to sum. Anuruddhupada means, now for example, now these defilements arise as kilesas. So some teachings focus on the arising kilesa. Sometimes the Buddha focus on the latent defilement. So, but they are the same. So, based on the focus, so this Anupanopada, I refer to the khandas that would happen if the causes remain. It is twofold. Khandas of the life and the Akusala khandas in this life. I didn't mention it because it makes it complicated. So when you say Anupanupada, we are referring to the khandas which have not arisen yet. But you cannot remove this. And when you get Anupanupada selling, this also is included. But if I talk in that manner, it will really, it will get really, the lecture would be very difficult to understand. Even now, it is not an easy lecture, I know that. So it, it will be more complicated. So therefore, Anupanupada in this handout, I specifically refer to these realities which happened after life, but also I use the words very carefully wordings. I didn't refute the idea. I say that khandas that would happen. It is twofold. Khandas that would happen after life, after death, and khandas that would happen within this life, that are the Akusala khandas. So if you don't become Arahan, Loba will surely happen. So when Loba is removed, the Loba which it happened in this life is also eradicated. Right? So Sometimes in the Anupanupada, I am focusing about the Khanda level, not the latent level. Right? So in Anirudhupada, I am talking about only about the latent states. Latent state. But as you, you are perfectly correct, when we say Anupanupada, it refers to the Khandas and also it refers to the latent states. When you use the word Anupana. But for the easiness of conveying this idea, I specifically mention Anupanupada are the Khandas that would have not arisen, Anuruddhupada are the latent states. Yes. Do you need it to be explained again? Is it? So I'll go to the next question, right? So we actually Anupana Upada but here to avoid the confusion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But how about Anirudha Upada? Anirudha Upada also can be called both. So they are the same? They are the same. And in this type of mini also the same? I gave Anirudha Upada for here, Anupana Upada for the Kandas. Purposely I did it. Right? Purposely I did. If I say it's same, you will find what is the difference? Why why Bande is giving all the same words here and there? In one sense is what I'm doing is wrong, but but uh, for the easiness to convey this idea. Because these things are not discussed at all normally. So just to show that such explanations are found in our literature. And they also collaborate with the canon. So that's what I wanted to show. So when he say Ragakaya, he was focusing at this this stage. When he was selling Kamakaya, he was focusing on this stage. In the Nakasika Sutta, he was focusing on this stage. When he talk about Arahant, is, Arahant doesn't do Akusalas anymore, he's focusing on the Akusalas which happened in this stage. In different suttas, his aim was different. So how to bring them into one philosophical framework and to explain them without contradicting any of all the suttas, that is the purpose of a tradition. That is why fundamentals are necessary. So when you have this overall idea, you will find, when, if, you, if you look into the suttas with this background, you find Buddha was, was uh, sometimes he was referring to different, different aspects. When you don't have this basic fundamental, you may understand the sutta, but you may understand sometimes you may get the enlightenment even, but it will be very difficult to link them. So the purpose of this is to get a holistic picture. So whatever the sutta comes now, when, when with, this, with this kind of approach, 
when the sutta come, when you read a sutta, whether he is referring, the uh, arahant is no more doing any apusala, he is free from that, he is referring to the apusala that would have arisen if the latent defilements remain. When he says the raga kaya, he refers to this state, removing of this latent defilement. That is why he rebuked the Malukya Putta, he was focusing on this. When he say kamakkaya, so he say purana kamang kina, uh, past kamma is kina means this kamma is not going to give results as a rebirth. But he also mentions the past kamma can still give results in this life. He mentioned about 12 kamma that he got affected, Mahamukkalana got affected. Then when he says he is not producing new kammas, it means because of the latent defilements are removed, kammas are not going to happen, new kammas. So then, many mentioned the, uh, the suffering, uh, Sotapanna is released from the sansara, he was referring to these states. So likewise, there are different approaches, focuses the Buddha has made. The purpose of this kind of a holistic explanation is to give you the entire overall idea, so it will be easy to understand whatever sutta you read. Yes, correct. Not been the then, then the then this killing might give him next birth, might not give him next birth. A killing means what? Uh, he like he was Mahamudra only in the end he was uh, murdered. He was murdered, yeah. 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 So this this murder would have given him next birth. Like uh, like that particular uh, kamma. Which kamma? Uh, he killed his mother. Yeah, he killed his parents according to the religion, yeah, right? right? He Of that karma. Yeah. But he was arhan. Yeah. Therefore, it could not give him the next life. Correct? Right. But if he was not arhan. Shall I explain this when we come to the karma? You are, to, or you are asking a very important question. I will explain this when it comes to the. If I try to explain, I have to bring a lots of information for this. Is it okay? okay. We'll, we'll come to this because uh, if I give a brief, short explanation, uh, it's like the past kammas give results and also give rebirth. For example, even if he, not Arahant, if he was a virtuous person, that Kamma would kill him but not give a result, rebirth. But for the Devadatta, the same Kamma he did in that same life killed him and also gave a rebirth. So this explanation comes as if the person is virtuous, when the Akusala Kamma is killing him, it would only kill him but not give a rebirth. If it is unvirtuous, most probably such akusala kammas would kill and give a rebirth in a bad state. That is how it is explained. Right? I'll come to this point in detail when it comes to uh, Yes. Result, uh, yes. Because there are four types of results. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll come to that uh, point. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh,